Hi, my name is Biao and I'm currently a first year land economist at St. Edmund's College. So I'll be answering a couple of questions that might be on your mind as you think you apply to Oxford or Cambridge. So, first question, what's the main difference between education in the UK and that of the US? There's a huge difference. Um, for instance, in the US you study the liberal arts, which means that you have to study a lot of other subjects such as classics, anthropology, or political sciences as you focus on your main subject, whatever that might be. And if you're in Cambridge or most UK universities, you do focus on one main subject, in some cases one, two, three, but at the same time, there are a lot more contents and a lot more interrelated than the subjects you'll be studying in 10 of your major subjects in the US. In the US, you get continuously assessed, everything is counted, which means that homeworks, um, your midterm exams, you're not really midterm exams, but they occur every single week. Your final year exams, which happen every single semester, they all counted. Whereas in the UK, you have one main exam at the end of the year, typically in May or June. And that means that you can spend the first two semesters studying for the sake of studying and processing what you've learned. Why not Cambridge over Oxford? Well, it all comes down to fit. I could spend most of my life in major cities and I thought, well, I don't want to be in the city anymore. Cambridge, as you'll find, is very much like a town rather than a city. You have green pastures everywhere. You have colleges that are extremely huge, and some colleges that are small but still on average bigger than that of Oxford. And uh, at the same time, you do have a lot more room to breathe, essentially, because it's so much more town than the city. I think in Oxford, it's a lot more dynamic. People who've been there, you realize that Oxford is a lot more energetic a city. It is a lot more historic in the sense that most of their buildings are made of sandstone rather than um, the brick that you see in Cambridge and it feels a lot more like a major cosmopolitan area so in terms of fit you have to think about where you want to spend the next three four even six years in and I think that will help you decide whether you want to apply to Oxford or Cambridge. How are students taught and how do you pick the college? Uh, well, students are taught in two main methods in Oxford and Cambridge. One, you have lectures like everyone else, but on top of that, you have supervisions or tutorials. And these are groups of four students where you study in very intense discussion-based environment, and that really forces you to prepare, if not you be humiliated in front of your supervisors. In terms of how I picked my college, I didn't have a lot of choice. I am what they call a transfer student, and so I could only choose between three colleges, but that also meant that I didn't have a lot of things to worry about. So I just looked at fit. Is the college open enough in terms of culture? Different colleges have different cultures. Mine was both traditional among the three. I chose it based on that. And of course, location. Location is so important. Uh, my college is close to the boat house, which is extremely convenient because I was in Rowan. And on top of that, it was 10 minutes away from the department. So always look at location because that is going to make or break every single day of life. How do I prepare for the application process? It's not as difficult as it might seem. I mean, it's rather straightforward. You just write your personal statement like everyone else. And on top of that, you make sure that you do well for the assessments, whatever they might be. And you prepare for the interview. An interview is not really an interview. It's just a mock supervision. They ask you a couple of questions related to your subject. You try to engage in intellectual dialogue with them and, and try to convince your interviewers that you are the right person for a place at Cambridge or Oxford. How easy is it to fit in at Oxford? And related to that, how well represented Malaysian students are in Cambridge? I think it's rather easy to fit in. <laughs> if you come here, you realize that there's a lot of Malaysian students, I think close to 100 plus undergraduates in total and that means that as a Malaysian student you have a community regardless of whether or not you make friends outside of the Malaysian bubble you definitely have a community I play badminton and basketball with Malaysians every two weeks prior to this COVID thing happening and that really helped my mental health and let's see finally are the Harry Potter dinners really as good as they look uh, it's good or miss. I think formal is one of the great traditions of Oxbridge. 
It's a three course meal where you pay no more than 10 to 12 pounds if you're lucky, sometimes 14, 15 will pour. And if you think about it, it is quite a steal, three course meal for that price. So sometimes they're nice, sometimes not. It's hit and miss, and the whole part of the fun is that as you hop around different colleges, try and do you know, essentially go for different formats. You realize which are the good ones and which are the not so good ones. But I hope I managed to answer most of your questions. Have a great day.